Hallelujah. I want to welcome each one and every one of you once again to God's Word. Actually, uh, last uh, episode we were dealing with uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And uh, we were midway through that only. So we'll just continue that. And it says, you know, I'm reading from the book of uh, the Amplified Version of the Bible. Hallelujah. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So there is a calling for each one of us. That calling never happened. Actually, you need to understand, the calling is always there. Because when you read the word in the book of Ephesians itself, chapter 1, verse 4, we need to understand that even before the foundation of the world, God, God Father, had known each one of us in his son, Jesus Christ. It reads like this, just as he, in his love, he chose us. So he called us, he called us, he chose us, sorry, he chose us and he called us. Now it is for you to respond to the call, that is different. He has always called you, chose us in Christ, actually selected us for himself as his own before the foundation of the world so that we would be holy, that is consecrated, set apart for him, purpose driven and blameless in his sight in love. So there is a calling for each one of us and this calling again is very clearly demonstrated in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5 where he tells Jeremiah the prophet and that you know he has what his, his perception of Jeremiah and what his plan for Jeremiah is. Very clearly he tells him and he tells him that it is not as you think but I have a great purpose in your life and he continues to say in verse 5 of Jeremiah chapter 1 it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. So there is a calling and a choice. So God has seen us earlier, even before the foundation of the world. Even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God so he, he knew each one of you. Yes, he knew you, my dear brother, my dear sister. And he has uh, says very clearly, and... Uh, and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I sanctified you. I separated you from the world. I, I want you to be with me, for me. Hallelujah. And then can you say, I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And I have given you a great commission, an appointment, that you shall be a prophet, that you shall be my mouth to the people. Are you with me? Such a great and loving God. Even before you were born, my dear brother, even before you became very holy, hallelujah, you could say in a worldly sense, you know, in a religious sense, you could say, even before you became very holy, hallelujah, hallelujah, even before you, even before the earth was made, he saw each one of us in Christ Jesus. He says very clearly that even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I sanctified you, I consecrated you, and I appointed you, hallelujah, to be a prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. So that is the hope of the calling. Are you with me? And there is such a great hope. And then it talks about the glory. He says that uh, he, uh, to which he has, expectation to which he has called us, he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. That we are God's people. Are you, one, are you with me? We are the children of God. We are the redeemed of the Lord. That is why when you read 1 Peter 2, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10 and all that you find that he has redeemed us from the clutches of sin and of death and of darkness and he has brought us into his marvelous light. Then it says very clearly that you were once not a people but now you are my people, my own. He says once you have not received mercy but now you are vessels of mercy, my mercy. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So today you need to understand there is a great transformation of our status and therefore, there is a great transformation of our destiny when you belong to Jesus. So my dear brother, my dear it is time that you decided that I belong to Jesus. I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That is why 1 Peter 1, 18, 19 says, You have not been redeemed by corruptible things like silver or gold, but by the precious blood of the Lamb of God without blemish or spot from the aimless conduct that you received by tradition from your forefathers. That is where you have been redeemed. You have not been redeemed from uh, adultery or fornication or uh, murder or theft. No. 
those are all the byproducts of not relying upon Jesus but relying upon the law which upholds or supports tradition. Tradition, the foundation of tradition is law. And that is where, that is the place from which you have been redeemed. My dear brother, my sister, so today you need to understand that when Jesus paid the price, actually just like, like a, like a, you, I mean, I'm just giving you an example. Huh? He has purchased you. That is, you belong to Satan once. But he paid his blood, with his blood, he gave the exchange and he bought you to be his own. That is why in the scripture, you are often re referred to as my purchase possession. God is referring to you as my purchase possession. Then hear this, which is greater, my special treasure. You are the special treasure of God. Because he paid the price of his life of his only begotten son, my dear brother, my dear sister. Oh, how, how, how much our God loves us. How much the Father loves you and me. And if you are able to understand that, you know that you are, you and I are the inheritance of Jesus Christ, of the Father. Because the price has been paid by Jesus Christ our Lord for owning you. And then verse 19 continues to say of Ephesians 1. I am reading all this from the Amplified Version which gives a greater explanation to the word. It says, and so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe these are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength. Hallelujah. So it continues to, I mean, I'll read out 20 also. Which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And where has he seated him? Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human, and far above every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and world, but also in the one to come. Hallelujah. So today you need to understand that. So when, so when the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, you will one, know what is the hope of your calling. Two, you will know what is the glory that is waiting, waiting to be revealed in you, who are his inheritance. Third, you will know the amazing, awesome power that is already in you, is, is deposited in you, because you are the temple of the living God. God's presence is there. We know when um, in the book of Joshua, when the, the foot or the soles of the priest touched the waters of the Jordan, the Jordan parted. Not because of their holiness, not because they did anything, because of the presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant. Are you with me? So when you are carrying the Holy Spirit of the Living God as a temple of the Living God, as very clearly confirmed in the book of uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, 20 onwards. So when wherever you go, you are carrying the very presence of God. That is the power of God. Hallelujah. That awesome power you should be able to comprehend. Hallelujah. So that it says, so and so that you will begin to know what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his actual active spiritual power. There is a great power. And what is this power? This power is the same power which when God said, let there be light, there was light. Light was created. So it is able to create. There is a creative power. Are you with me? That is why in, uh, in the scripture is referred to about God. He calls into existence things which did not exist as though they existed. Are you with me? This is something which you need to understand. So the power, exceeding greatness of the power, one is creative power. Then there is a destructive power. Look at the walls of Jericho. God just told them to circle it for six days and the third day to circle it and then to sing praises to the Lord. And as the words confirms in the book of uh, Psalm 22, 3, when they praise the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the almighty King of kings and the Lord of lords was enthroned in their praises and he was there leading the... And what was done there to the walls of Jericho was not done by the people of God, but by the host. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The signing of the Kartavai Devam. Amen. The whole Lord of hosts accomplished it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Also the destructive power. You can find out when the firstborn of Egypt, everyone of man and animal and everything was killed by the angel of death. Hallelujah. I mean you can go on and on and on. The Red Sea parting. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? 
water gushing forth from the rock in the wilderness, the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything, the Holy Spirit is a dynamis power of God which is manifested when you confess the word of God and for the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Things happen. Hallelujah. My dear brother, my dear sister, that is the dynamis power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. He says, and so that you will begin to know what is the immeasurable. Mind cannot even understand or comprehend because your understanding is so limited, so small when compared to the awesomeness, exceeding greatness of the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God who is in you. And he says, the immeasurable and unlimited. There is no limit. There is no, you can say, Holy, Holy Spirit can work up to so much. After that, he cannot work. No. It's the unlimited, unlimited and surpassing greatness. One cannot even understand, you know. Our minds, like I told you earlier, cannot even comprehend the greatness of his power. Active spiritual power that is in us. It is not somewhere else. It is in us because you are the, ca- the vessel carrying the presence of God wherever you go. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But of course, you must believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, which he produced in Christ Jesus. So, uh, the Holy Spirit is also life-giving power. We know Jesus Christ died at the cross of Calvary. He was uh, buried in the tomb. And according to the scriptures, on the third day he rose again. He rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of the living God once again came and raised and gave life to that body. Spiritual life to the body and the body rose again. Are you with me? That same Holy Spirit is working in you and me today. That is why he says, which he produced in Christ, verse 20, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So today you need to understand the Holy Spirit of the living God. A very good example is in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, where there is a valley of dry bones. It is all dead and forsaken and useless and hopeless. But, you must read the whole scripture, but when the prophet prophesied to the bones. They started moving. They started joining together. They, the sinews became saying The flesh came everywhere. Still, it was only a body. Then God says to breathe. Then the, the breath of life came. The Holy Spirit of the living God came there. They rose up like an army. So the transformation from a valley of dead bones or dry bones, sorry, a valley of dry bones into an army for the Lord. This transformation is by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Today, my dear brother, my dear sister, if you have any situation which can be compared to a valley of dry bones, I want to tell you, you proclaim the prophetic words of God onto that and you pray for the Holy Spirit of the living God to come there and give life to those dead situations. Hallelujah, the situations will rise up. Hallelujah for, hallelujah for your advantage. As an army of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Again, very clearly says that this Holy Spirit of the living God who will come into you, who is with you when you are a son and a daughter of God and which will seat you also in places of authority. Are you with me? Jesus Christ, you know, when, uh, when you read the word in the book of uh, um, Philippines chapter 2, it talks about that after Jesus Christ died because the Father has, has honored him. And said that every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ alone is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are you with me? This honor was given to Jesus. And again when you read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. This is what happens to you and me also. If you are able to carry your cross, if you are able to emulate Jesus, if you are able to follow Jesus, and if you are able to despise all the shame and the ridicule and the, and the chastisement and the ostracization and all the trials and tribulations that might come your way because you have accepted Jesus, then the Lord will reward you with a great joy which you hear in the book of Matthew chapter 25, enter into the joy of the Lord because you have been a good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. And then you will sit down with, in the throne of God, with, with God. Because Jesus very clearly says, I am coming to take you back to be where I am with me. Amen. So I am not speculating a big throne or anything. You will be with Jesus and with the Father, assuredly. No, no doubt about it. No shadow of doubt. You will be with him. So that is a great honor that the Lord is going to give each one of us. 
Hallelujah. So it says very clearly that uh, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, and there is a description of that heavenly place. Where is that? What is that? What is the status of that place? What is the power attached to that place? That authority. And that is described in greater detail in verse 21 of Ephesians 1. It says, Far above every rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human, it covers every power, and far above every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and the world, but also in the one to come. So up to eternity. Are you with me? So he sits in the heavenlies, far above every principality and power, every dominion and might, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. So above everything, Jesus Christ our Lord is seated, exercising authority. So today, my dear brother, my sister, Jesus Christ is not on that cross. Are you with me? He is not hanging on that cross at Calvary. Please understand that. He is a risen Lord. He is a King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords, exercising authority over all creation in heaven. And the good news is, when you read the word in Ephesians 2.6, it says very clearly, And he raised us up together with him when we believed. So you also are a born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Whosoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The old, futile, um, defeated, hopeless, you know, person, carnal man has gone, has died. And a new person in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, having the mind of Christ, exercising power, spiritual authority and power, he is risen and he is come. Hallelujah. And he says, he has raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places, which we referred to earlier in Ephesians 1.20. Hallelujah. And it says, because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when you are in Christ Jesus, he has also raised us up together to be with him, exercising kingdom authority while you are here as ambassadors of Christ. Are you with me? You are on a delegation. You are on a mission. You are on an assignment. This is not your permanent place. That is why Ephesians 3.20 says our kingship, our, our citizenship, sorry, not kingship, our citizenship is of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven. We have come here as ambassadors. Ephesians 2, sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are ambassadors of Christ. And it's as though God were pleading through us, be reconciled to the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus is pleading through us to be reconciled to the Father. To have a relationship with the Father. Come back to the Father's house. You may be in the pigsty, like the prodigal son in Luke 15. But God is urging you, come back to the Father's house. Be reconciled. Confess your sins. Because God's word says in 1 John 1 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now, it will be interesting to have a connection between the word in, uh, in Ephesians 2.6, which says that he has raised us up. Uh, word is like this. And he raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And that is very clearly because we are in Christ Jesus means because we are attached to him, because we are part and parcel of Christ Jesus. The word of God very clearly in when you go back to the word in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. It says, And he put all things in every realm in subjection under Christ's feet. So everything we heard earlier, or he is sitting far above every principality and power, every dominion and might and every name that is named, not only in this age but in the age to come. And therefore it says, And he put all things in every realm, the spiritual and the physical, every realm, he has put it in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritative head over all things in the church. In the church. So the church is there. So he, Jesus is in authority or, or dominion over everything in the spiritual and in the worldly realm. And Jesus Christ is there, is in the church. The church is there with him. And it continues to say, which is his body? The church is his body. 
the fullness of him who fulfills who fills and completes all things in all believers so the fullness of christ is in the church and christ is the head of the church and we are the members of the church and the church is seated in the heavenlies far above every principality and power every dominion and might and every name that is named not only in this age but in the age to come so today my dear brother may i want to remind you of the authority that god has given us you and me each one member of the church when you are united together with him a body is not a whole body when it does not have a head so a church without jesus christ as a head is not alive because when you cut the head off the body dies neither can a head be a body without the body are you with me without the 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 all the parts other than the head so the fullness of christ is in his church that is where jesus christ came into this earth world to 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 have the fullness of himself the purpose of his coming here is to have a church which is in authority over everything so that the redemptive work that you and i can also be joined with christ through through christ to god the father and we become one family hallelujah exercising kingdom authority so my dear brother my dear sister what i want to urge you today is that you and i should have the revelation knowledge should have the eyes of our understanding enlightened first of all to have that you need the spirit of wisdom and of uh, of uh, revelation of the knowledge of him knowledge of jesus christ and when you have that knowledge the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so that you will be able to know what is the hope of my calling jesus christ has called me but is there a hope yes there is a hope that will never disappoint you because god loves you my dear brother my dear sister the holy spirit of the living god if you are open to him he will teach you about the love of god because when you have the love of god when you are filled with the love of god as the word says in the epistle of john 1 john 4:18 i'll read it out to you hallelujah hallelujah it says like this there is no fear in love dread does not exist but perfect complete full grown love drives out fear because fear involves the expectation of divine punishment so the one who is afraid of god's judgment is not perfected in love has not grown into a sufficient understanding of god's love are you with me and to put it shortly perfect love casts out all fear because fear is the opposite of faith hallelujah so you have the hope of that calling because god loves me and because i respond to that call the glory that is waiting to be revealed god says in the word in his word in john 11:40 did i not tell you if only you would believe you would see the glory of the lord hallelujah the glory of god amen so when you believe when you respond to the call when you believe in jesus then because you believe god's glory is going to be manifested in us and because god's glory is being manifested in our lives that the power of god moves or comes with you wherever you go whatever you do it is not by might it is not by power it is by my spirit says a lot of things the holy spirit of the living god is working in you with you on you in wherever in your total totality he is there hallelujah so you get an understanding of what is the 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 glory that is going to be revealed and like i told you earlier that glory is going to be revealed only because the presence of the lord is moving with you and in you and on you and everything that you do is because of his presence in your life hallelujah hallelujah so my dear brother manisha you need to understand very clearly hallelujah as we are able to wind up this episode that what we need is spiritual enlightenment so what we need to understand is that the spiritual eyes must be enlightened so we can see what the lord has provided for us we should not be blind we should not be blinded spiritually blinded spiritually maybe you have a lot of sight physical sight you are able to understand everything but unless the eyes of your understanding let us pray to the lord to open our eyes so that we will be able to see and uh, in the next episode we will god will teach us and we will pray to the lord to teach us about in 1 corinthians 2 9 and 10 it says i has not seen ear has not heard nor has a human heart perceived what god has kept in store for those who love him but we are able to see with our spiritual eyes 
here with our spiritual ears and understand in our hearts what God has kept in store for us who believe because the Holy Spirit of the living God has revealed this to us because the Spirit of the living God searches the deep things of God and reveals it to His children. Amen. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you for the words that you have spoken into our lives. We pray that you will open our understanding, Lord. You will give us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That you will open our eyes. You will open our hearts. You will open our ears. So we will be receptive to you and to your teaching, Lord. And the revelation that comes from that, Lord. So that, Lord, we will be able to, hallelujah, exercise. We will be able to uh, possess every blessing that you have kept in store for us, your children. And we will be able to live in that authority, live in those blessings. For your glory, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.